It's a late night here in the auditorium. We got a great one today. We're talking about density. We're talking about bearing pressure, stress, all encompassed into one with a great little example that I think you're all going to love. We obviously referenced the new civil PE reference manual for specifically the computer-based test. We want to unravel its mysteries, pull back the layers, and see and find the bits of information that are going to push you over the edge to passing your exam. All right, so we'd start out this problem like anything else. Take the information and let's try to you know, draw a picture with it. So that means we have our beautiful uh, cube of concrete that they are going to dump and have uh, sink down to the bottom of the lake. Four feet tall, 20 feet wide, and 60 feet long. Uh, assume that 100% contact with the lake bed and uniform loading, so there's not any type of like hot zones or, or high stress points where you have um, an uneven loading where the concrete pad is sitting at the bottom of the lake, so we don't have to worry about any of that. It's a perfect condition. And then we have the density of concrete given. That is a big component to this problem of 150 pounds per cubic foot, PCF. The other density that we need in this problem is the density of water, and you'll see why here in a second. So density of water, you're like, uh, question mark. I don't know, is it 50, is it 100? Should I know that? Well, just in case, drop my pen. I'm back, pen's back. Well, just in case if you don't know that, let's head over to the civil PE reference manual, of course, and let's dive in. <laughs> Come on, come on, it's not that bad. It's kind of bad, but it's not that bad. If we scroll down to literally the first page after the table of contents, and we go one page further, you'll find yourselves in chapter one, which is general engineering. This has a lot of good information for all of the disciplines. Water, traffic, geotech, structural, construction, you're all gonna be using this at some point to pull some kind of general info that you don't want crammed up in your brain and bogging you down. Under commonly used equivalents is one cubic foot of water weight. 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Let's take that info and come on back. 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And just like the units specify, for all you beginners out there, that's if we had a one foot by one foot by one foot cube of water. And the weight of that would equal 62.4 pounds. But you're like, why do we need this? This problem seems very, very straightforward. Um, but the kind of the twist in here is that we are taking this mass of concrete and we're chucking it into a lake and it's gonna sink all the way down to the bottom and sit on the bottom of the lake bed. Anyone who's been in a pool before or in a body of water and they, maybe there's a, you know, super weird, maybe there's a stone in there, a big stone, and you had to pick it up or pick something up out of the pool, maybe a cousin of yours or, you know, whatever. And you realize that maybe you couldn't pick that thing up outside of the water and, you know, on dry land. But for some reason, when you pick that object up while it's submerged in water, you can actually do it. It actually feels lighter. And that's because you have a little bit of buoyancy acting on uh, that object that is submerged in the water. And that's exactly what's happening here today. Um, and you're like, wait, when you say buoyancy though, I think of, you know, ships on the open sea and that's why boats float on top of the water type of thing. Um, we have something that's floating down in the water or sitting underneath the water. Why are we talking about that? Because you still have that action happening and you need to take that into consideration when you're determining a bearing pressure and that's what we're doing here. And something really helpful is that when you have, um, I'm just gonna do a squiggly red object that weighs more than the density of water, it means that that squiggly object will, we have our water right here, will sink in water. But if you have a squiggly green object that weighs less than the density of water, that means that your squiggly object will actually float on top of the water. With that little bit of information, we can see that our density of concrete is greater than our density of water. So we fall under the red squiggly interpretation. But what does that mean for our equation? Well, we need to find bearing stress because they're looking for a solution in PSF. PSF, pounds per square foot, that triggers in your brain that that's a stress. Is just equal to the equation P over A. Let's determine both of these. P is going to be the weight of your concrete minus the unit weight of the water, which is uh, giving a buoyant effect and acting upward on that concrete, which is making it 
seemingly lighter when it's submerged in water. Well, how do we do that simplistically? You can actually just take the density of concrete minus out the density of water and then multiply that by the volume of your object. P is going to equal 150 PCF minus 62.4 PCF, put that in parentheses, and then multiply it by our volume. Our volume, if we scroll back up here, I'll do it up top, is equal to 4 feet times 20 feet times 60 feet, the total sum uh, of the volume of your mass of concrete. That equals 4,800 cubic feet. Let's go take that info, plug it in here, 4,800. That gets you a total force P of 420,480 pounds. Next, we need area. Area, and this is the surface area that's in contact um, of your concrete mass with the lake bed. That is gonna be, if we scroll up here, this dimension and this dimension, the area equals 20 feet times 60 feet, which equals 1,200 square feet. Let's bring that info back down. And now your total bearing pressure is equal to P over A. And we know we're in the right track, at least for uh, an indicator based on the units that we have left over here, which is pounds on top and a surface area of feet squared on the bottom. So that's an area and that's a force on top. That means we're on the right track here. I think we're looking good for a final answer of 350 pounds per square foot. And I would go green for right answers, and I would say for this problem, our answer is going to be A, 350 PSF. And do you think you need a little more preparation before your upcoming exam? Well, the good news is I have now officially partnered with the School of PE, which is an organization uh, that has the same goal that we here on this channel have which is to help engineers pass their exams and become professionally licensed engineers. You can sign up for full classes going in depth on topics that you may not be too familiar with or want to get even sharper on. And they cover the FE, the PE, and even the SE uh, for civil engineers. So they cover it all. And yes, we all know what an affiliate link is. So if you head in the description and you do happen to click on my link, and see something you like over there and purchase it, I will get some type of small commission. I don't even know what it is. I'm, I'm more so just really excited to be partnered with somebody. Maybe I'll be able to buy a little bit more groceries for you know my dog. But besides that, um, that part doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is to get the info in front of you and give you another resource to help better yourself. So check them out. I'm gonna be adding them into my descriptions from here on out in all my future videos. And until next time, this is Rich with Team Kestava. I'm glad every single one of you are here. Don't worry about why my shirt changed all of a sudden. It's, you know, just a glitch in the matrix. And I will see everybody next time.